Hello and welcome to uh, Success Gyan's podcast. Uh, I'm Savan Kapoor and today we are talking about what to do when you land up in the wrong job. So a warm welcome to you once again. See, unfortunately, the formal system of education does not teach us how to uncover what we are truly meant to do. And specifically with regard to our careers, you know, answer the question, how does one get the right job? If you ask the formal system of education this question, what is the right career for me and how do I go about ensuring that I build a great career in the right field? Their answer is A square plus B square equals A square plus B square plus 2AB. That is the response is unsubstantial because the formal system of education primarily provides us with subject matter expertise. It, it provides us uh, domain knowledge. As a result, you know, many working professionals land up in the wrong job or the wrong industry or the wrong function. And a few years into their career journey, this problem only compounds. A few years into their career journey, they become even further disenchanted with their work and they feel that they are not connected with their professional responsibilities because their head and their heart is not in the game anymore. This in turn impacts their career's progress. You know, they can feel unappreciated, like they are not being recognized for the contributions that they may be making. If one is not passionate about the work that one is doing, then, you know, doing great work becomes a challenge and a mismatch sets in, in terms of the work that they are doing and the expectations of the organization or of one's boss. They can feel underpaid. See, one's salary is a representation of one's worth in the job market. And it is dependent on the value that you're able to build, the, the results that you pr produce and the degree of complexity that you can solve. If one is not engaged with one's work, then it feels like a burden and, you know, leads to that dissatisfaction and a feeling of being left behind in terms of pay and title and uh, even responsibilities. They can feel underemployed where the opportunity to use their strengths and capabilities in the everyday performance of their job remains untapped and adding to this all of the other concerns such as tackling workplace politics which is all of the power games that get played in an office environment or living in fear of losing one's job which is not a fun position to be in or facing the performance appraisal or you know being overworked or even the the daunting task of looking for new opportunities the fear and the doubt that one experiences can you know very quickly spiral out of hand and it paralyzes one from even attempting to start fundamentally many individuals land up selecting their careers out of some form of pressure either parental pressure or peer pressure or societal pressure or even you know, basing it on what is hot at the moment. Uh, there was a, a Hindi movie, uh, you know, that came out a few years ago by the name of Three Idiots. And it depicted this beautifully where Farhan, one of the characters, uh, one of the main actors played by R. Madhavan, wants to become a wildlife photographer, but his father wants him to become an engineer. And see, this situation was equivalent of a cat blaming itself for not being able to swim underwater like a fish. If the cat judges itself on its ability to swim underwater like a fish, then the cat will think that it is mad that, you know, there is something wrong with it. See, a full 30 to 40 year career has six distinct stages. And in one of the previous podcasts, I spoke about all of these stages. See, these stages are uh, the first one is the aspiration stage. The second one is the promise stage. The third one is the momentum stage. The fourth one is the harvest stage. The fifth one is the encore stage. And the sixth is the legacy stage. We are going to spend the majority of our waking hours at work. So this is a decision that is choosing your career. It's a decision that cannot be taken lightly. And unfortunately, many working professionals, especially freshers, fall into this trap of making the wrong career choice because the reflection and the introspection required to know what you are truly meant to do does not take place by the time that they are ready to embrace this professional world of work. The first stage, which is the aspiration stage, requires one to have developed a sense of self and knowing what you are, you know, truly crazy about a career choice that gives you joy, gives you professional fulfillment, pays you well and is needed in the world, which creates that sense of, you know, being on a mission. This is a stage that is best characterized by the word discovery. 
and the majority of people coming into the workforce do not follow the mandate of this stage which is to try many things and ask yourself these deep questions to uncover what it is that you truly want to do and this is where most people land up making an uninformed or a misaligned career choice see the biggest concern for working professionals who fall into this trap is that by the time they realize that this is not a sustainable career choice for them they worry that if they do try to fix the problem they will have to start at the very bottom again in a field that they may be passionate about but they'll have to start at the bottom because they have no experience in that field their concern is that they will have to compromise with salary and designation and responsibilities and even their lifestyle and prestige if they try to correct the problem now this problem is known as the permission paradox the permission paradox states that you cannot get the job without the experience and you cannot get the experience without getting the job it's the classic catch 22 of careers and while it starts for most in the first stage that is the aspiration stage it can occur in later stages as well especially the next two stages of your career which are the promise stage and the momentum stage and in the later stages also it leads to that same feeling that you know one has to fix this i must try to switch careers that is i must try to change my industry or my function or even both see the good news is that this problem can be fixed but it requires a systematic approach there is a process that needs to be followed to diagnose a misaligned career and this is where a career coach can really help many working professionals remain stuck in this loop where if they did not know how to choose the right career when they first started working they land up making the same mistake again and again and they keep repeating this loop this problem see a lesson in life does not leave us until it has taught us what we need to learn from it the best way to fix the issue is that one really has to look inwards and follow this systematic process working with an expert in fact working with an expert is the fastest way of getting from where you are to where you want to be they have the needed experience to help you understand the context with which you have to ask yourself these questions and where you come to truly understand your purpose and your priorities for your life and how they connect with the right career choice and then they further guide you in how to implement that process so not only do they help you make the right career choice but they also have the strategies to help you identify your transferable skills these are skills that will cross multiple industries so they help you move from one industry to another industry and you know in addition to this they also help you build a compelling value proposition based on your existing professional development that is you don't need to upskill yourself in any capacity anymore it's based on your current level of professional development where they help you build this compelling value proposition because they have the right quantitative and the right qualitative research methods that will be so compelling for an organization that they cannot let you walk away this is what shifts your value from being based just in your career history or your past experience to being based in what you bring to the table right now using these qualitative and quantitative research methodologies and learning how to market yourself based on your transferable skills to the right industry and the right function without having to compromise with pay or responsibility or title or having to begin you know right at the bottom changing industries or functions requires one to understand that this is a major step and not something that can be achieved overnight see when you are looking to switch careers one must get it that there are different types of switches switching industries is one type of career switch and relatively speaking this is the easiest one for example if one moves from the fmcg industry to the consulting industry that represents a a switch of industry another type of career switch is switching your function so for example moving from the finance function to the information technology function and this is relatively harder to do because you know the knowledge that will be required in the it function is very different from the knowledge that you have of the finance function and the third switch is the hardest which is changing both changing your industry and your function such a switch requires uh, a dual accelerated learning plan one for the industry and 
one for the function. See, to tackle the complexity of such problems that show up in one's career, please realize that help is available, that there are answers to such issues. Don't try to walk that journey alone because what can be tackled in a couple of months will land up taking years without the guidance of an expert. I hope this has been useful to you and added value to whenever you're listening to it. I am looking forward to seeing you in the next episode. Have a great day and a great week.